there was two problems where you guys had some trouble um, one of the sets for the prepare question was that you were given cyclohexane and you were supposed to convert it into this um, this protected dial um, so notice I'm just going to give you a little bit of uh, food for thought for what the retrosynthetic analysis should be hopefully you can see that this is going to come from the cis dial um, which is of course going to be tied in using acetone over here so essentially that's a protection of the acetone that you're doing um, of course the diol can be generated from the alkene and so now your target is to convert the cyclohexanone into cyclohexene and so in order to do that you perhaps should think that there should be a an OH which will be subjected to dehydration and of course the OH can be uh, just reduced from the cyclohexanone so how do we go about it that's the next thing so now that we know how to go about this what um, I would suggest so this is similar to what you would be doing in an MOS problem um, you would subject that to treatment with sodium borohydride THF that's going to convert the cyclohexanone into cyclohexanol which when treated with a dehydrating agent such as let's say concentrated H2SO4 and if you did not like that you may use the concentrated H3PO4 if you wanted to use the more milder methods you can absolutely use um, the POCl3 pyridine at 0 degrees Celsius and that's going to give you the alkene that alkene needs to be treated with osmium tetroxide pyridine follow it with sodium bisulfite and an aqueous solution so that there's water and you would subject that double bond into a dihydroxylation in a cis manner and that will need to be treated with acetone in presence of an acid so you can say HCl um, and that's going to tie essentially uh, the diol into the acetal unit and that's your preparation problem the other set contained this second problem that I have over here where benzene over several steps was supposed to be converted into this uh, structure that's shown and there's more than one way to think about this but a couple things um, one of the things hopefully that you can identify um, the nitro group has to be put on the benzene ring and so it will incorporate um, the nitration reaction at some point of time and notice the top part essentially contains one carbon two carbon and that again looks like an acetal so you can think about this acetal coming from uh, has to be an aldehyde or a ketone so if it's an aldehyde plus the ethylene glycol with acid is going to give you that product so uh, recall that this aldehyde can be converted uh, from the oxidation of a primary alcohol so if you were sub subjecting the primary alcohol to oxidation you would get the aldehyde of course you can end up uh, with the primary alcohol if this OH was put in uh, via an anti Markovnikov rule and let's say if you had a double bond there so hopefully you can think about two carbons um, like a styrene type unit still the nitro group and this can be achieved I wouldn't recommend Friedelcraft alkylation but rather acylation uh, followed by reduction and dehydration but between Friedel Craft reaction and nitration, which one do you think should occur first? Of course, it's going to have to be the Friedel Craft reaction because if the nitration is done, that's going to make the 
benzene ring, electron with a drawing, and so further Friedel-Craft reaction cannot take place. So now that you have some idea about how to go about it, let's take a look uh, in terms of steps how that's going to uh, how that's going to look. So you would start with benzene. You would treat that with acetyl chloride. ALCL3, ALCL3, that would give, that would put in a COCH3 on the benzene ring, so that's acetophenone. That is going to be subjected to concentrated HNO3 and concentrated H2SO4. That gives NO2 and the COCH3. Now you want to reduce it specifically um, in a manner that uh, the NO2 doesn't get affected. So there's a couple ways that you can do that. You can either use what we have recently learned, the hydrazine with KOH, so that won't, that won't touch the nitro. but it would reduce the C double bond O into the CH2. Alternatively, you could have used the hydrogenation, but use rani nickel or palladium, but only use one atmosphere, because for nitro group, you do require more like three atmospheric pressure. Um, this can then be subjected to NBS reaction, CCL4 is your solvent, Typically, a peroxide is taken because this is a free radical reaction, and that will give you the bromo derivative at the benzylic position. We are going to have to subject that to KOH treatment. That gives us the double bond. The double bond can be used under hydroboration reaction condition, BH3THF follow it with sodium bor sodium hydroxide and H2O2 and that gives you NO2 and OH. Oxidation with PCC, I'll have to make some room here. Maybe switch color. So oxidation with PCC that's going to convert the primary alcohol into an aldehyde and subject that into treatment with the ethylene glycol that we discussed previously with acid is going to form your product. And that's it. Um, some people uh, might want to think about this as adding the two carbons separately. And you can do that if you want to. Uh, in which case you will have to put a single carbon atom at that location and that would mean that um, you would have to start with carbon monoxide, HCl and AlCl3. That's called a Gatterman reaction. Recall from when we first did the Friedel-Craft um, reaction, the alkylation and acylation, and I discussed it then. Uh, but you don't have to go that route because in that case you would be adding one or two steps of however you would be utilizing Grenard reaction, Grenard chemistry that you have learned in class.